Good morning, hello, how are you and welcome to AntiDarren.com. In this video I'm going to show you three, yes three, never fail, absolutely the best bread recipes you're ever going to use. Good morning, hello and welcome to AntiDarren.com. How are you doing? How are you? The sun's shining, the bees are buzzing, the cat's sat on the windowsill again, never mind. Anyway, in this video I want to show you how to make perfect, perfect bread doughs which can, which can be converted. Now, the supermarkets, as I've said, are getting more and more stock in, but sometimes it's nice while we're stuck at home on lockdown to make bread at home and it's easy whoever tells you it's difficult to do they're lying to you if you have a mixer a hand mixer if you have a stand mixer even if you don't it can be done by hand because i'm making three today i'm gonna do it using a stand mixer next week i might do some completely by hand for you but i'm going to give you the basic measurements and the basic ways of doing them and um, you don't need a big stand mixer you can if you've got a little hand mixer with those little twirly bits on you can use those to help knead your dough it takes less time than you think the actual work time is about five minutes after that, it's just time to let it prove. This can be done the night before. You can let it prove in the fridge overnight. The longer the prove, the better. I'm going to try and get all this done in one afternoon. But hey, now, big message first of all. Because we're still in lockdown, please, please, please. I know you want to go out, but stay at home. Protect the NHS and save lives. It's really important message and on every video I'm going to turn around and I'm going to say that. Having said that now we're going to go over to the stand mixer and I'm going to make some. So into the bowl of the stand mixer you're going to take 500 grams of strong plain flour. Must be strong plain flour. This first one's a white, a white dough perfect for making balm cakes bacon butties bacon rolls salad sandwiches whatever you want this is perfect for making balm cakes with and they are balm cakes because i'm from manchester they're not muffins they're not stotties they're not but they're a softer white roll you know the sort of thing that you normally get from the bakers on a saturday morning and then you fill it with bacon egg sausage mushroom tomatoes oh my god does that sound good oh I might do that, you know. I might have that for... No, I've salad day because it's nice outside. On top of the 500 grams of um, strong flour, we're going to put 40 grams of butter at one side of the bowl. We're going to put 10 grams of salt. 10 grams of salt might seem like a lot of salt, but it helps with the flavour. Then we're going to put on the opposite side to the salt, we're going to put 10 grams of fast action yeast. Okay, don't bother if you can't get fresh yeast, fast action yeast lasts longer for you. It's a better way to, it's a better way to buy it. Don't go for the dried yeast, That you go for the fast action yeast so you don't have to make it up. I'll explain later, but anyway. And then you want 40 grams of sugar. Now the sugar goes in with that to help feed the yeast. We're going to put the mixer down and start it off. We want to try and incorporate absolutely everything. Once it's incorporated, we're going to add 320, 320 gram, 320 milliliters of cold water. Don't think it's a wild, old wives tale that you have to use warm water cold water it really doesn't matter it'll still take the same amount to prove so that's in with that 320 grams half at a time as you can see that's starting to come together so i'm going to add the remainder of the water 
you might not need to add all the water it's down to the weather conditions it's down to um, the way your flour absorbs water all sorts of things like that and then I'm just going to increase the speed of the mixer to medium and let it go for five minutes Okay, so that's five minutes of kneading on the machine. That's all it takes. And believe me, if you're doing it by, by hand, it's still going to take the same amount of time. The thing with bread dough is, it's a chemical reaction. Anyway, let's show you how to finish this off and get it ready for proving. And it's really, really simple. So let's go down there like so. Touch your flour on your work surface. Use strong plain flour, same as you would with the other and you will just release all this dough from the bowl like that I mean come on that's beautiful that is absolutely beautiful we're just going to fold it into a nice circle or into a nice round like so That's formed a nice round. Now if you take it in your hand and you push it like that, you'll see it springs back. It's, it's beautiful. It's alive. It's dough. It's wonderfully alive. Now into the, on top of that, we're going to pop that into a greased bowl. Little sprinkle of flour on top. Cover it with some cling film. Leave it for about an hour till it's done. Okay, so that's an hour gone by. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flour, oops a daisy, my surface and flour a chopping board. You can see over there I've floured the surface and a chopping board. Out comes the barn cake dough, like so. I'm going to knock it back down, roll that air out of it. And for this, I want I want to divide it into twelve. So divide it in half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, four, six, eight, ten. We get the twelve as we go along. We want them to be about seventy grams. Then with these barn cakes, we'll go under here. We just want to roll them like so. And using the cup of the hand, like that. It's actually better to do this without any flour on, the, on this bit of surface. So we push down, form a cage. like so and that's 12 ready to go all I'm going to do is sprinkle touch the flour on top of them and leave those now to rest again for another 30 minutes perfect so now we're going to finish off the barn cakes it's really really simple onto the base of a baking tray we're going to throw some more flour Can't make bread without using flour unfortunately and for this stage you're going to need a rolling pin 
yet again make sure as I said previously it's well flowered those little rolls are rested as you can see from here for about half an hour and all we're going to do is we're just going to roll them till they're doubled in till they've doubled the normal size like so another generous sprinkle of flour on the top tea towel over them leave them now for about three quarters of an hour to double in size again and then we're going to bake them in the oven but now's the time to light your oven and you want to light your oven to 220 to 250 degrees okay so that's an hour that the balm cakes have been proving. Let's just have a quick peek under here. Yep, perfect. They've doubled in size. These are going to be absolutely wonderful. They're going to go into a 240 degree oven for approximately 10 minutes. Okay, that's about 12 minutes gone by. And now we'll see how the balm cakes are doing. Yeah, they're pretty perfect. All you need to do, once you take them out of the oven, immediately you need to bang the whole tray, like so. Make sure that the balm cakes lift. It, he it helps with the structure and it stabilises them so that they won't shrink. At this stage, leave the balm cakes on the tray. The next dough is slightly different. This is an enriched dough. This is going to make you things like Belgian buns, Chelsea buns, um, donuts, uh, hot cross buns, whatever you want to make for them. Exactly the same, I'll just put this, I'm working on two cameras at the moment, so you'll have to excuse me. Exactly the same as, uh, with the white bread dough. We're gonna start off, let's go over here with 500 grams of white bread flour. Again, 500 grams is gonna be pretty much your standard measurement. Then we're gonna add, yet again, 10 grams of salt to the far side of the bowl. 75 grams of sugar this time. It's an enriched dough. It's slightly more elastic, voluptuous, and oh, yeah. This will make a perfect donut dough if you want to make donuts, but please, please, please be careful if you're making donuts with your kids because it's hot fat. Same side that you put your sugar on, we want to put the 10 grams of yeast. Now, using a separate bowl, we're going to add two eggs. I know, two eggs. See, this is going to be rich and luscious. Two eggs, 120 millilitres of milk, warm, I know with this one you need it to be warm, 40 grams of butter and 120 millilitres of warm water, or warm water, or just water will do, it doesn't have to be warm because your milk's warm. So what we're going to do, same as with the other one, we're going to start that going. I'm just going to rein in the liquid and the butter. The thing with this dough, it's a lot wetter, a lot wetter. You're going to have to knead this again for five to ten minutes. Because it's wet, you're waiting for everything to come together. And quite, the do quite hard. Come back to you in ten minutes and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, that's a five to eight minutes. It's actually had eight minutes. Uh, and I'll show you what to do to finish the dough off. So back round to the thing again. Gonna lift that up, same as before. 
good sprinkling of flour on the thing. Just let me move this camera back a little bit. Oh. This is a much stickier dough, a much more pleasant feel dough to deal with. And you'll notice I'm using the same mixer for everything. Yet again, don't want to waste any of that dough, so I'm going to just scrape it off with a little scraper. Now I did have a little a proper little dough scraper, but typical when I start do when I start doing a job like this, I've lost it. So God knows where it's gone. Put that back on there because we'll need it for the other dough. Same as with this one, I'm just use this dough straight scraper. I'm just going to toss it in the flour and quickly see how alive this is it's lovely and warm and luscious yet again you know it's done right because when you twist it round if you poke in it's it springs back up into the you get a bowl with a little bit of oil on it on the outside that needs to go into there Touch a flour on top of it again to stop it sticking. Let's pop some cling film on it so it doesn't form a crusty skin. And that's the last thing you want, a crusty skin on your bread. That goes over here now to prove yet again for an hour or until doubled in size. Now we're going to move on to the enriched dough. First things first, we'll take it out of the out of its bowl. Want to knock as much of the air out of it as we can. Oh, Turn these into Belgian buns, so I want roughly about or Chelsea buns. So I'm going to put add one, two tablespoons of demerara sugar over the top of it. On top of that, I'm going to add a little bit of softened melted but well melted butter that's gone soft. And then we're going to take some mixed fruit, some sultanas. These are just supermarket basics. And we're just going to roll the sultanas out like so. Want to make sure you've got a good covering of fruit. So every single bun has a fruit, has a bit of fruit in it. I'm going to take it like so and I start to roll it in a spiral Remove the ends. Make sure, like so. Now, as you can see, I forgot to put push play on the recorder. So all you do is slice them into rounds and place them into a baking, a buttered baking tray. A plastic bag. One. Both into plastic bags and let's leave those to prove. Now we're going to go on to the fruit buns, Belgian buns, whatever you want to call them. 
Um, these have been proving now about an hour. They've doubled in size, they're nicely connected. Oh, two nice little trays of those. Absolutely perfect again. 220 degrees is your oven and you're going to put these into the oven now for 20 minutes. Okay, so that's 20 minutes gone by. Let's have a look how these little buns are doing, shall we? Oh, my gosh, they look good. Same as with the balm cakes. And all I've done to finish these luscious buns off is make a little bit of water icing with a touch of water and some icing sugar. Okay, now it's time for your last bread. It's a brown bread or a 50-50. 50% white flour, 50% brown flour. Let's go over to the stand mixer. Still using exactly the same stand mixer. There's not loads of washing up to be involved. You know, I'm making this at home. I'm not making this industrial. So you can use the same mixer for all your breads. I would advise doing it the way I've done it. White bread first, then enriched dough, then brown dough. Then everything pretty much proves at the same time. So let's go over to the bench. And it's a slightly different recipe. So the recipe is... 250 grams of strong white flour, 250 grams of whole, strong wholemeal flour into a mixer, 40 grams of butter, 10 grams of salt and 10 grams of yeast. Now that's pretty much the same. Because it's wholemeal we are not going to add any sugar to this one, it doesn't need it. So I'm just going to start the mixer off. Let's start the butter incorporating with it. Turn the speed down a little bit. And then in with the water. Still save a little bit of the bottom. Yep, it's going to take all of that water. So pop that all in there. And that, my friend, is your brown dough done. Leave it to me now, five to ten minutes, and it'll be luscious and wonderful, and doesn't need to be on a high speed. Keep it like so for ten minutes. Okay, so that's about eight minutes, and we're ready to take it off the mix. Exactly the same as with every other dough that we've done. We're going to put a liberal amount of flour on the bench. Now I'm still using white flour. Remember this is a 50-50. Oops a daisy. Let's get that pointing down a little bit. Can you see that? Yeah. We won't be needing that anymore. And we certainly won't be needing that anymore. So the same using the heel of my thing the heel of my hand I'm just going to turn it all out, all into a dough yet again do the push test it's springy springy back back springy springy back back what are you three year olds anyway into a bowl cling wrap over the top of it and we're going to leave that now for an hour. Now it's time to finish the brown loaf off. And as you can see, that's perfect at the moment. Oven still at 220 degrees. I just want to get a sharp knife and quickly score it in four places. Oh, hang on a minute, just need to get a little jug. With some water in. We're going to pop the brown bread into the oven. 
still 220 degrees. I'm going to throw some water in the bottom. Leave that for roughly 30 to 35 minutes until it's cooked, luscious and hollow. So that's 30 minutes, 30, 35 minutes. Let's have a look and see how that brown loaf is doing. Oh. And I'll tell you one thing, that looks pretty amazing. It really does. Just lovely and hollow and ready to go. But so far today I've made you balm cakes, I've made you sticky buns and I've made you a brown loaf. If this is the sort of content you like, if you really, really like it, please, 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 big thumbs up. Leave comments down below. I'll see you next time. And remember, stay in, protect the NHS, save lives, and I'll see you in my next video.